at the settings screen of FS Flying School Pro, we can configure uh, various uh, data that uh, relates to uh, voice commands, the, the sound card setup, uh, flight simulator folders, this sort of thing. Uh, we don't very often have to uh, visit the uh, settings screen, but it is probably somewhere you're going to go to when you uh, first install FS Flying School Pro. So if we take a look at the settings screen, which of course we get to just by clicking on this uh, button right here, uh, we notice that the uh, first uh, section that we have is the voice command section. Now this is only relevant if uh, we're going to be using the voice commands. Now we can use this right from day one uh, because uh, voice commands are available uh, as a demo of the uh, FS Flying School add-on voice command pack which can be purchased in addition to FS Flying School Pro. If you purchase it then you'll be entering a registration key for the voice command pack into the credits screen of um, FS Flying School Pro. But even if you don't purchase it you can, pri you can try it out in the free demo mode as long as you're flying within the demo area that stretches from Chicago to Green Bay. And what you're going to want to do to uh, try out uh, the voice command pack is determine uh, under what circumstances you want FS Flying School to be listening to your voice. And you basically got three selections here. You can either have no voice commands at all, in which case Flying School will not be listening to what you're saying. Uh, you can have it controlled by a key, which is the FS Flying School microphone key, which is pressing 5 on the main keyboard, not on the numeric keypad. This will turn your microphone on and off as far as uh, FS Flying School is concerned. Or the other option is to have it on at all times, in which case you don't need to use a microphone key. Uh, but that does mean that you have to have a very good environment in which to use the uh, feature because uh, if it's on all the time of course there is the possibility that it could pick up uh, background noise um, from your environment and there is therefore the potential then that it could uh, trigger a command that you did not mean uh, to be triggered because somebody has just said something to you or the dog's barking or a truck has just gone past your house or something like this. So you can choose between the two of those. Uh, one, obviously this one gives you greater control but it does mean you have to remember to press the key. This one you don't have to press anything but you do have to have a good environment. Um, then we've got uh, the Windows uh, speech settings which are triggered by this button here. That will show you the uh, way that Windows uh, speech recognition is uh, configured on your PC. Um, we've also then moving across on the same level. This is actually unrelated to the voice command. This is, we're now onto spoken tips. Uh, there are two types of tips that we can select uh, from uh, this dialogue. We've got flight simulator and FS Flying School tips or we can have general aviation tips. The key difference between these is that the uh, flight simulator and flying school tips will be giving us tips about specifically about how to use flight simulator and how to use flying school. Uh, we'll be talking about keystrokes, that sort of thing, best practices, just to operate the programs themselves. On the other hand, you've got aviation tips, which is, well, it's about aviation in general. It's, it's not speaking in terms of a computer program. It's just giving us general information about aviation. And when do we hear these tips? Well, we hear these tips when we're flying along with FS Flying School during quieter times. Uh, your instructor is not going to be talking your ears off about some p particular detail of aviation or some particular detail of flight simulator seconds before before you're bringing a 747 into land, for example. Um, the instructors have got more sense than that. They will talk about these things randomly um, uh, when you are, basically when you're cruising. So when there's not much else to do except, uh, you know, keeping an eye on the, uh, the cockpit or the, the flight deck, at the quieter times he will throw in or she will throw in these uh, random tips for you and you can learn uh, in the quieter times. So <clears throat> you can turn those on and off uh, at this uh, section here which you just got checkboxes which you can turn on and off. Uh, then moving along. 
uh, we come to the sand card setup which is in this area here um, you may wish well, or rather I should say that FS Flying School, when it's installed, it will be using the default sound card, which is this option here. Um, but on PCs nowadays, you will often find that you've got several different sound cards to choose from. So, for example, if we drop this list down, we've got uh, four different options there, and we can choose the one which suits us best. You should be using this with uh, always with a view to uh, checking what sound cards are being used in Flight Simulator itself as well. And by using a creative combination, you could, for example, have uh, the sound from one coming out uh, being being uh, played rather into a headset that you're wearing and then you might have the sound from another being played into speakers for example in your room and that way you could have voice in your headset and engine sound coming out through speakers for example which would be um, uh, very immersive and very realistic if you change these settings uh, you'll want to uh, click on the save sound card setting button one of the other things that I should mention is that um, it may be that you will have to that you will have to use a uh, a different item from this list if you can't get the sound working in FS Flying School Pro immediately. If you just install it and the sound doesn't appear to be working, then go through this list, pick a different sound card, save it, and try with FS Flying School again. And in almost every instance, you will be able to find a sound device that will work fine with FS Flying School Pro. If you have any problems with that, then of course you can just send us an email to support at fsflyingschool.com or you can let us know through our FS Flying School forum. Moving down the screen, we come to the flight simulator folders. FS Flying School needs to know where your flight simulators are installed. Uh, as you will know, um, FS Flying School Pro works with FSX, but it also works with FS2004, and we've even got a folder on there for FS2002. We don't represent that the program will work with F, uh, Flight Simulator 2002, but some people do have some success in this area, so it's it's there if uh, the person wants to, uh, the user wants to try it. But primarily we're concerned with FSX, and secondarily we're concerned with Flight Simulator 2004. If you expect to be able to use FS Flying School Pro with these programs, then you must have the full uh, folder path in these uh, fields here. So we've got here for FSX, of course, and we've got here for Flight Simulator 2004. You can have uh, FS Flying School Pro find those folder locations automatically by just clicking on the load flight simulator folder locations from registry button which is conveniently placed there for us now that will work fine so long as your registry is in good shape or your windows registry is in good shape and is up to date as long as it knows where uh, those installations are this may not be the case if for example you have uh, deleted uh, a copy of Flight Simulator 2004 or, or FSX if you have deleted it without uninstalling it. That means that the registry won't know that it's gone um, and we can definitely get into issues here because the registry will be saying it's it's in one area if you've deleted it it's not there if you moved it for example without uninstalling it if you just copied it to another location and then deleted the original data again the registry is going to get confused this isn't a problem as long as you can tell um, FS Flying School Pro it precisely where it is that the um, installation of uh, Flight Simulator is on your PC uh, but that can get a little bit fiddly, so it's best, it's always best if you in install and uninstall programs uh, to try to keep the uh, registry uh, showing an accurate representation of what's on your PC. We've also got these buttons over here which are for generating runway data for Flight Simulator in, the, in its different versions. It is not actually necessary to do this. Uh, the um, 
FS Flying School Pro program is shipped with uh, the data that it needs uh, to be able to fly with FSX or FS2004. But if you have changed the runway data in any way, which can certainly happen if add-on scenery is installed or add-on airports and so forth, where sometimes the third-party uh, software uh, developer will choose to relocate runways, for example, and, and, and uh, there are many different things that could be done by installing add-on um, scenery. Uh, therefore, we would strongly recommend that you do, under, that, uh, under those circumstances, that you do generate the runway data. What, it, what that causes uh, to happen is that FS Flying School will generate a file of the runway information it needs specifically based on what is on your PC, not based on default uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator data. So if you're unsure, then by all means, generate the runway data. You just click that button, follow the instructions. The whole process will probably take less than five minutes. It depends on the speed of your PC. And then you'll have a clean set of runway data, um, all up to date for your PC. And this is the data that controls, for example, when your instructor is telling you where the runway is, how far away it is, uh, whether or not you're above or beneath the glide slope when you're coming in to land, that sort of thing. So it is crucial that the uh, data be correct. But as I say, you don't have to generate it if you are using um, flight simulator as it came out of the box from Microsoft and you have not added any um, add-on scenery. Uh, then moving down the screen, uh, we then get, just get to some general information that tells us about FSUIPC. FSUIPC, of course, is the program that is the bridge between FS Flying School Pro and Microsoft Flight Simulator. It must be installed on your PC in order to use FS Flying School Pro. It is free. It's entirely free. You don't have to register it. If it asks you to register it at that screen, you just click Cancel. The program will be installed without any registration um, because it is not necessary to register FSUI PC in order to have FS Flying School Pro function. This section then tells us what FSUI PC is reporting. It's reporting that uh, we're currently connected to FSX. Uh, tells us our FSUI PC version number. You, you must always try to use the latest version. If you don't have the latest version, please download and install it. Uh, if we've been having any read errors, uh, we've also got um, some other information here about runways and time and so forth, and the status is OK, and that, that's what we want to see. And that just about wraps up uh, the settings screen for us of FS Flying School Pro.